The cure or the fixes for anxiety and depression aren't necessarily as much to be discovered as I feel like they are to be discussed. These are issues of humanity. It doesn't matter where you come from or what you have or what you don't have. Literally, I've been there. I've been in the deepest and the darkest depths of despair, anxiety, panic attacks, sleeplessness, like all of it. Forgive yourself for yesterday's mishaps and open yourself up to tomorrow's miracles. How can I help illuminate the path that was once unseen to me. That becomes the meaning of life for all of us, I think, is to take your mess and to turn it into your message and to share with others in an open and loving way that brings about healing for all of us. Hey you guys, Dusty here and welcome back to Eat, Move, Rest. So in this video, I'm gonna break down kind of my story, a little bit of my background with mental health. Um, frankly, just open up and let you guys know that I struggle too. Then I wanna talk a little bit about some of the methods that I've used to heal, to open up, and to transform my lifestyle basically. And then I actually wanna talk about a few products that have been really useful in my healing and in my transformation. So today's video is long overdue. In fact, probably about six or seven months overdue. I intended originally to film this in California on Halloween day. The significance of that is that in 2017, on Halloween, I had a legitimate mental breakdown. For whatever reason, in the fall, like right around my birthday in 2017, I started feeling anxious again. While I was at the gym one day, I I full on like felt a panic attack come on. I hadn't felt that in years. And I remember I texted my mom and my brother immediately and said, hey, like, I don't know what's going on, but I feel super anxious. And you know, I wasn't really looking for any type of response. I just wanted them to know because I've known that in the past, the number one thing that has helped has, communi has been communication, like opening up about whatever you're feeling, whenever you're feeling. The next few weeks, my anxiety level continued to raise. You know, I had been reading books by Viktor Frank and Dante and all of these like super deep you know spiritual books and religious books and philosophical books and I was kind of getting lost in my head frankly listening to too many podcasts and started to just question a lot it had gotten to the point where I was completely out of control I had not been sleeping so I would lay in bed and I would be so anxious that I would start shaking so I would go lay on the couch to not disturb Aaron in bed and I would basically lay there all night. I would do whatever I could to try to calm down and I just couldn't seem to do it. So eventually this not sleeping led to not eating during the day and this anxiety had completely consumed my life. Again, it wasn't necessarily that I was in any actual harm or fear, but this is anxiety, right? We don't ever understand it. It just, it is what it is and it can be terrifying. So I found myself in Aaron's dad's clinic. He's a family physician being given anti-anxiety meds and prescribed an antidepressant to basically knock me out right away because I needed to sleep and I hadn't slept in days and to two, hopefully get me out of this hole that I had dug myself into. That next morning, sort of like waking up and coming to was definitely not easy. I had sworn off pharmaceuticals for life and here I was, I woke up, I had two pills next to my bed, an anti-anxiety medication and an antidepressant. But I knew that I needed help. I was at the point where I was literally willing to do anything and so I committed to doing all of it in the right way. So I started seeing a therapist. In fact, I started seeing multiple. <laughs> I was taking the medication. I was taking supplements for sleep. I was blending smoothies and doing all the right things to make sure that I was fueled. And very slowly but surely, I began to dig myself out of this pit of anxiety and depression. And it was worse than it has ever been before, right? I thought that it was bad when I was a teenager, but this was absolutely debilitating and humiliating. Here I am like a 30, 31 year old like man with a wife and a mortgage and a business. Frankly, I was devastated. I felt like a failure. I felt embarrassed. I felt all of the emotions that again, weren't helping my situation at all. So through therapy, through online courses and through my own like self exploration, forgiving myself, loving myself through this situation, I was able to slowly start the healing process. And I can say now that three and a half years later, I'm in a better 
better place than I've ever been in my life. And it's not because I'm stronger and healthier than all the rest. It's because my quote mental illness has forced me to take better care of my mental health. So there's a misconception these days that people with quote mental illnesses are like forever damaged people and they belong in like a different category, but it's simply not true. I mean, everyone gets sick, right? We all get physical illnesses, but we don't become categorized by our physical illnesses, like our colds or our coughs or whatever it might be. But for whatever reason, a mental illness is forever. And I, that's just 100% not true. You know, I never got any like brain scans or tests when I was going through my anxiety and depression, but it very well could have been some sort of virus that was affecting my brain. Either way, a mental illness doesn't necessarily mean that you're permanently damaged or that you permanently need medication or therapy or any of these things. It simply means that right now you have something to treat. And so once I figured that out, I was able to forgive myself, get over some of the shame, and say that this right here is just temporary. And so I want you guys that are watching this to all know, if you've been told that you have a mental illness or feel like you might have a mental illness, just remember that this isn't like a death sentence. This isn't necessarily who you are just because you have a mental illness. Again, physical illnesses happen every season for some people. And so I think it's very similar to say the same thing about our mental health. So as we recognize again, the physical and the mental, I also wanna talk about that a little bit. So we reside as human beings, right? Human beings, not human doings. As human beings, we live in two realms, right? We live in the physical and we live in the mental. So something I've realized through my years, again, of research and therapy, and yes, even being on medications, is that most of my stresses reside in the mental side of things, right? Physically, I'm very rarely in danger. So most often now when we're experiencing like overwhelming fear, anxiety, or depression, we need to realize that these are actually happening in the mental state of our reality. So what can I do to get myself out of this mental state, right? What do I do to get out of my head? You have to get back into the physical. This is why number one, I say breathe first because this actually gets you back into your body. You focus on like something physiological, right? So you can feel your stomach and your chest rise and you can feel the air come in and out. You can even close your eyes and focus and you'll start to have a physiological change and that when you start to regulate and notice your breath and focus on that breath, some of these mental stressors will just kind of take a back seat. And as you continue to recognize these physiological changes, your heart rate will slow down and as a result, so will your mind. The racing mind will also slow down. So again, number one is breathe. Another method that I found to be really helpful in regards to getting out of my head and back into my body is the five, four, three, two, one method. So we have five senses and in order to, again, transcend the mental and get back into the physical, we need to recognize immediately those five senses. So if you're feeling anxious, you're feeling a panic attack coming on, again, I would say stop, ah, regulate your breath, and then I would go into a five, four, three, two, one. Pay attention to the sights, the sounds, the smells, the feels, and even the tastes around you, whatever it might be. But if you can pinpoint five things, one or more, in each of those five senses, you're sure to be pulled back out of the mental and back into the physical. And if you can do this outdoors, even better, because I feel like nature is so healing. If you can take a break and get outside, you'll surely start to heal through nature. And again, if you're doing this five, four, three, two, one method, there's no better place to be than in nature because you'll hear birds. Maybe you'll see the birds. I saw two bald eagles, no joke, right here in the boathouse where I am just a few weeks ago, two bald eagles were out here on the lake eating uh, like a dead, I don't know, something but it was so amazing. And it was a cold and blustery and kind of a lousy day, but just observing and feeling like I was a part of that nature was like transcendent for me. So again, 
focus on getting out of the mental and back into the physical body and that will at least temporarily help get you to a better place with your stress, anxiety, and maybe even your feelings of depression. Number two, another good way to get out of the mental and back into the physical would be exercise. This is something Aaron and I do every single day. And if you watch our stories, you probably think like, you gotta be like me hitting a punching bag or like Aaron doing hill sprints while she's pregnant. And that's just not the case. You know, that for us is what we like to do to, to work out and to exercise. But for you, it can simply mean getting out for a walk or doing some push-ups in the bathroom before you get in the shower or doing some jumping jacks in the kitchen or maybe even just doing some stretching or some simple simple yoga in the living room. Like it doesn't matter, but moving your body again is going to bring you back into the physical state of existence and free you from some of the mental stressors. I often say again on my Instagram, when the body moves, the mind grooves, right? So if you want to fall into a healthy groove or a healthy mindset, get that body moving, get that blood pumping and you will be more balanced, right? You won't be so mentally weighed down, so mentally heavy, but getting out and kind of working your body a little bit will bring you back more into homeostasis, a better balance. In fact, sometimes you can get it's so physical that your mind just escapes completely, right? You're so into your run or so into your ride or your yoga practice, whatever it is, that you're not thinking at all. And for me, that's a great place to be. Number three, I would say really focus on your rest. Back when I was really struggling with my anxiety and my fear and some depression and all of that stuff, my sleep was terrible and it only made things worse. So for me, I seriously prioritize sleep over everything. Thing. If I don't get that sleep, my mind doesn't recover, I'm going to be exhausted the next day. And even one day without good sleep can trigger anxiety or a panic attack and can set me on a very fast negative downward spiral. And so for me, sleep is non-negotiable. So again, I mentioned talking about some products that I use. Those are mostly going to help me sleep because for me, that's where the biggest change in healing has come is from getting good rest that just has set me up for success in my days. The things that I still use and I'm like super religious about that have helped me these last few years are number one, magnesium. Magnesium is crucial to rest and repair. So it actually helps you sleep. It helps your muscles recover. It can actually help you go to the bathroom, but it is like so, so good at actually calming you down. And again, has definitely helped to knock me out at the end of the day. So helps to relax if you have like restless legs. And again, even anxiety, like I feel like the magnesium just calms me down and chills me out. So you can do things like, again, take a magnesium dropper that we can recommend below. You can take a magnesium salt bath, you know, soak in that, like an Epsom salt bath for 20 minutes or so. Or you can use a spray. Aaron and I actually have a magnesium spray bottle, which is getting kind of like a mineral salt water that you spray on your limbs and your core. And like, no joke, it'll, it'll really knock you out. So that's been something that I've used like pretty consistently. Number two, the lavender essential oil. I do not go to sleep. In fact, I travel even with my lavender <laughs> essential oil roller ball. I put it on my hands, I put it in my face, I, I sniff it, I rub it on my chest, and no joke, it, it's so calming. It really does help me sleep, so that's another thing I don't go without. And the last thing that I will say has really worked that I've been super skeptical about in the past, but I found like the best brand that we have now communicated with the owners of, and they've actually agreed to sponsor this video is Complete Human. So they make a CBD or a CBC oil, which has been like a serious game changer in my mental health, especially in regards to my sleep. So we all have like an endocannabinoid system, which is something I was reading about years ago when I was was actually first going through my struggles like what can I take that's actually a natural that can work for us and again most of these CBD oils are like poorly absorbed but the CBC by complete human is like a perfect mashup of the CBC CBD and CBG that it's more readily absorbed by the body and it actually works not only does it work it works super fast so most CBDs on the market work within like 20 or 30 minutes and I will say that I have used some that have helped calm me down 
down. But this one from Complete Human works in like five minutes. Like no joke. I actually wait to take it before I go to bed. Like I, we always like go hang out in the basement or watch a movie or whatever. And if I take it before we watch a movie, I'll fall asleep while watching the movie, which is something I like never do. So anyway, this stuff seriously works. It's grown in the USA, which again for me is actually pretty important. Like I want to make sure whatever it is I'm putting into my body is like healthy and clean and organic and I can be assured that theirs is. So yeah, I highly recommend that. Get on some magnesium, use your lavender essential oil and definitely check out the CBC from Complete Human. It's by far the best, most natural like anxiety, depression, like anxiousness, like calming natural product I've ever used. So again, I highly, highly recommend that. I'll link all these products below, including the CBC from Complete Human and if you actually use Eat Move Rest at checkout you'll get 10% off so again use our link use our discount code to save and highly recommend these products try them for yourself you're sure to at least sleep better which is again is gonna set you up for a better morning the next day and Aaron and I always say that it's like a steam engine effect right eat well move well rest well and it just continues and you build momentum and again for me it starts with a good night's rest. It's followed up the next morning with a super healthy meal, a green smoothie, and then follow that up with an awesome workout, which frankly wears me out. So I sleep harder again that next night and the cycle continues. Number four, I would say open up about whatever it is you're struggling with. Maybe you have a friend or a family member or a spouse that you can say, hey, I'm kind of feeling anxious right now. And even if you're not sure why, like I mentioned before, I texted my mom and my brother because you need to get out in front of these things. You need to be super proactive, whether it's something small or something big, sometimes you don't always know. And so again, I would say open up to someone, if not everyone. And it's so cool that we're at a point in time where it's becoming okay, especially for men too, to also open up about their mental health. Because again, like I said before, as a growing boy, like I felt like I couldn't really talk about mental or emotional struggles because we had to be tough. We're also seeing a trend shift in that mental health is kind of like physical health. Like you can be proactive with your mental health just like you can be proactive with your physical health. Like you have a gym membership for your physical health, like why not? have a therapist for your mental health like even if you're not necessarily struggling or maybe you don't necessarily or haven't been you know diagnosed with a mental illness it's still not a bad idea to in fact I think it's essential to communicate with someone about your mental health on a regular basis and do something you know and you're on your own to become more mentally fit. Going back to 2017 when I was an absolute wreck, I was in pretty darn good physical health. I was super fit, I was lean, I was strong, and again, after being on a vegan diet for a few years, physically, I was in tip top shape. But because I was mentally a wreck, that didn't matter. So for me, I actually prioritize my mental health now before my physical health. So again, whatever that practice might be to you, I again recommend talking about your mental health regularly meditating, journaling, and just being open and vulnerable about whatever it is you might be feeling or dealing with in order to become more mentally fit. I've seen a handful of different therapists from just like counselors to psychiatrists and my favorite um, type of therapy that has frankly been like super basic but worked really well for me is cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. That is basically learning to rewrite the mind, like figure out how you think and think in a negative way that's causing you to feel anxious, stressed, depressed and literally rewrite those thoughts with positive, more uplifting, more hopeful thoughts to literally again create new neural pathways in your mind, in your brain, physically, and do it in a way that changes your life. And it has worked for me. And again, doing it in conjunction with the right amount and proper medication has for me really seriously helped to, to make it work in a way that I feel like I can successfully come off of the medication and still live a healthy, happy life and not let my thoughts take over. 
right? So again, therapy is so crucial and it's been super helpful for me. And again, that's something that I would highly recommend too is cognitive behavioral therapy in addition to you know your regular counseling and, and um, groups and anything like that. So if number four was all about opening up and being vulnerable with people, I would say number five has got to be sort of a self-reflection and I would say learning to love and forgive yourself. Learning unconditional love, not just for others, but almost more importantly for yourself to say, look man, I love you so much that I can't stand to see you struggle with this anymore. Or I love you so much that I'm gonna forgive you for whatever you've done in the past, forgive you for whatever you're going to do in the future, and just love you through whatever you might be going through right now. It's crazy, but that can be so super hard to do. It's something I struggle with every single day. And when I have an outburst and yell at Max or yell at Aaron or slam a door and all of these things, I realize that it's not my anger with them, it's usually my angers and frustrations with myself that cause me to lash out. And so the more I can be gentle and loving and forgiving of myself, the more I can be better for those around me. And also, like I said earlier, recognizing that these challenges and these hard times in your life aren't necessarily curses, but they might just be gifts. So for me, these struggles that I've had to deal with have literally made me the person I am today. Your cross to bear might not just be a cross to bear, it might actually be the very thing that you are meant to lean into. Open up to the idea that your mess might just become your message. This for me um, is meaning. A lot of the therapy that I did, including some of the courses, the online courses that I took, had a similar, like a common denominator, and that was finding meaning in your life. So the apathy that I was often feeling sort of came from a lack of meaning or sense of direction in my life. So finding meaning for me became, yes, finding my message in the mess of my life. So I wake up every day inspired to reply to the next person who sends me a DM, who's struggling with their physical or their mental health. You know, My mission has now become, how can I help illuminate the path that was once unseen to me? How can I therefore illuminate that for someone else? How can I bring about understanding in a certain place that someone else is currently lost? And so again, that becomes my meaning, right? That becomes the meaning of life for all of us, I think, is to take your mess and to turn it into your message and to share with others in an open and loving way that brings about healing for all of us. So moving on to my fifth sort of tip in regards to transcending or overcoming or learning to deal with these mental struggles and deal with our mental health in a positive way is to understand that I am a spiritual being having, having a human experience. So for me, spirituality is absolutely crucial. Recognizing again that I'm a spiritual being having a temporary human experience, number one, frees me from a lot of the mortal fears I have whether that be sickness or illness or death or losing a limb or being in an accident or any of these things, I first recognize that everything is temporary, especially on this planet, on this physical plane of existence, everything is temporary and it's happening so fast. I'm recognizing that as a husband and especially as a father, wow, like the years and the days and the weeks are flying by and it's fun and it's exciting. It can be scary, it can be sad, but it's also helping me to recognize that it's all temporary. So for me to waste too much time thinking and worrying about my physical body in this physical realm simply is a waste of time and that time's gonna pass me by. So realizing that I'm a spiritual being helps me to sort of transcend not just the physical but also the mental realm. So connecting to a consciousness that is beyond physical and mental but it's spiritual. Closing my eyes, learning to meditate, right? We hear about meditation all the time. Whether it's a Catholic priest that I talk to about meditation or a, a yogi in Costa Rica, the, the principles are the same, right? Being able to transcend my physical body, my mental thoughts, and reach a state of 
calm, empty, quiet presence because the time is now, right? I saw a clock on a documentary the other day and it didn't say one, two, three, four, five. It said now, 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 now. And it's so true. If I'm looking too far in the future, I'm anxious. And if I'm dwelling on things in the past, I become depressed. But the only time we are seriously, truly living isn't even a minute ago, but it's right now. And it's right now. And again, it's right now. And if you're only focused on the right now, you can explore the, your surroundings and trust that I'm physically safe. And you can detach from the past and the future and become mentally safe. And you can actually, again, I would prefer being outdoors in nature to sit and transcend and to connect with the spiritual side of me that frankly connects us all, that connects all beings, that connects every fiber that makes up this earth and this planet that we live on. And to me, that has been the most healing, is being able to say, I'm a part of something so big and so grand, and I'm so loved by this divine, intelligent, creative creator, right? What do I have to worry about? What do I really have to worry about? I'm so taken care of. And looking back at the scariest of scary times and understanding that I was being nurtured and cared for and molded into the person that I am today. And so again, I like rejoice in my struggles because they have made me who I am. And so looking forward, when I mistakenly start to future trip and look forward at the things that I'm worried about, a new baby, for instance, possibly moving, you know, all of these things that have big question marks that can cause anxiety and fear and stress, I actually say, bring it on. Bring it on because I see where I have been. I see what I've overcome. I see how I've been molded and shaped into, again, this person who sits here now, who has at one point experienced suicidal thoughts. I was in such a deep, dark place. I actually didn't know if I could or would want to even live. And I hate to admit that, but it's true. I was there and I never thought that I would be. That person is the same person who sits here now. And I know that through that struggle, I've become so much stronger and wiser and healthier and happier. And again, I've found meaning to the point where I feel like I'm able to now share it with you guys. My mess has become my message. And I'm tied spiritually to all of you who are watching this and all of those who have gone before me, my grandparents, my ancestors, and all the monkeys on our hike in Costa Rica. Like we're all connected by such, such basic needs, fresh air, fresh fruit, food, fresh water, and unconditional love. To say, I respect you if you respect me, and I see you, and you see me, right? Like that's literally what all of this comes down to, is connectedness, opening up, talking to one another, and sharing is where the healing will actually come through. So this actually brings me to surrender. A friend recently sent me just a couple days ago the serenity prayer and it was perfectly timed. Like that's just what I needed was that reminder to say, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change what I can and the wisdom to know the difference. In rehearsing that prayer or that mantra, I'm able to release all my fears, all my struggles, all my worries and cling on to that thread that connects us all and that is ultimately held by what, who I call God, our Creator, and to say, look, I'm held here. I'm nurtured, I'm loved, I'm trusted. Most of all, I'm forgiven. And once you understand that for yourself and you're able to do that for yourself, you're able to do that for others, all of these fears and these stresses and these worries dissipate and it's definitely a journey and it's not easy and it's not going to be fun but it is the true path understanding that we are loved above everything else and that we are forgiven and once you understand that and accept that for yourself you are able to literally start every day new every new day is a new birth when you let go of yesterday's mishaps and open yourself up to tomorrow's miracles, life becomes free 
and exciting and life-giving. We don't know what tomorrow brings. The best is yet to come. Remind yourself of these things. Set a reminder for every morning to start the day anew. Whatever happened yesterday is in the past and whatever might be tomorrow is in the future, right? It's a mystery. And so the only time we can live is now, like I said before. Stay present, focus on your breath, and be here now. Don't be ashamed. Don't feel lost, don't feel sad. Connect with others, connect with me, and through sharing and communication, healing will come. So, love you guys, thanks for watching this video. Peace, love, eat, move, rest, your best.